Hello friends, I hope you're fine. If you live in the northern hemisphere of this planet, you'll uh, encounter, at least in Central Europe, uh, a very nice and uh, beautiful summer. And in the southern he hemisphere, of course, uh, the autumn is approaching, so enjoy the color of the leaves, etc. This is a very simple scene, and I uh, introduced it in order to show you something about what I read on Facebook in one of the Maya forums. Somebody asked, what is the hyper shader for? The hyper shader. It's uh, under Windows and rendering editors, because shading is about rendering and beauty and light, etc. And here's a hyper shader. This icon here is found here as well. So that's how we can approach it. Uh, what is it for? Well, basically, when we create a torus here, and we want to give it a nice shader, we would typically go this uh, go about this way. Right mouse click, assign new material, go to Arnold, for example, and choose an AI standard surface shader. Uh, we can render it now. It should look quite shiny. The lights are a bit dim. I usually go to the utilities and light manager here so I can raise the intensity quite a bit and render it again. So it's that shiny white standard Arnold shader. And uh, if I want to put in, uh, make it more interesting, for example, by uh, changing the color to uh, a checkerboard, I would typically do this. And when I render it, it looks basically the same, very shiny, but with that checkerboard on. So that's a process I did only in the basic modeling in the standard Maya window. Let's undo these things until we're back to the Lambert shader, which is right here. That's the standard Lambert shader. So everything is else is gone now. And now let's uh, open the window for the hyper shade. Let's click here. And the window consists of these are the objects concerning lighting, particle lighting and shaders in the scene. The Lambert 1 is the Lambert which currently is on the torus. This is the Lambert 2 which is the ground plane and the rest we can just ignore. The main window here shows you uh, what, uh, well it enables you to build connections and that's what the Hypershade window is about. So what we'll do now is a standard procedure here. Uh, we, with the mouse hovering over this empty uh, window, we press the tab key just briefly. It will uh, open this uh, input section here and here we can put in AI standard surface. We don't need to type the whole word. It's already here, AI standard surface shader. So that's the shader we have. When we select it, we see here in this part of the window, we see a representation of this shader. It's a white shiny shader and you can use the uh, usual navigation tools here, for example, but to rotate here. It's a um, it's a complex object, but not too complex. And you can evaluate the influence of the shader here. For example, um, if you change the color to black, it will look black but still shiny because the specularity weight is set to 1. If we reduce this here, it will be just a dull black object. We middle mouse drag the standard surface shader onto our torus. So now the torus carries that standard surface shader. Now the left part is the input part. This is what you can plug into the standard surface shader. And the right part is the result of all these inputs here produce a color which is currently black because we changed it here, more or less black, a dark gray, uh, and it plugs it into a surface shader. It could plug in a volume shader in order to make a cloud, for example, or a displacement shader in order to uh, create displacement uh, from a texture. We've covered this in previous tutorials already. So uh, what do we plug in into the left side. Well, easy. We want to use a checkerboard for the color. 
So we want to plug something in here. It's the base color. By the way, you have much more things here in that standard Arnold uh, surface shader. When you click on the white icon here, you see other and the whole window appears with lots and lots of parameters where can, you can put in um, uh, more uh, parameters here. So let's uh, just briefly click tab and checker and then you see the checkerboard here. It's a checker texture we need and it comes with two nodes. One is the placement. It tells us or it tells Maya how to place that black and white rectangular checker texture with black and white onto our surface. Uh, if you change, if you pick the place 2D texture node here and change the repeat UV values from they're currently 4 by 4, you change them from 8 by 4, you get this kind of uh, coverage here. And uh, you have noise, uh, etc. If you just in introduce a little bit of noise, this is all about placement. You get th this structure here. The checker as such deals with the color. So, for example, we can choose a blue for the dark areas here. Um, and maybe a yellow for the white areas. So we have a checkerboard texture, but it's not there on the torus yet. Why is that? Because we didn't make a connection between the checker and the standard surface shader. So um, we'll do this now and uh, here you see out color. You can open this little plus sign here. You have out colors red, green and blue. And these are three parameters. And um, if you click here you see that it doesn't plug in, for example, into the transmission because the transmission is a single value and not three values. But the specular color, for example, is okay because the specular color is about RGB, so red, green, and blue. But we want to plug it into the base color, and that's what we do now. The base color accepts three values as well, so out color to base color is just fine. And then, of course, we get this representation here which is on our torus as well. The checkerboard uh, is just a very simple way of connecting things. You can use the out alpha which is only a black and white information where it's darker or brighter here. It's, so it's a single value not three values. You can plug it into for example well the emission so it will emit only in the brighter section, the dark sections won't emit light. I could place uh, an invert utility node right in here and tell the out color to be inverted exactly. All the values which are uh, plus will be minus then. So uh, lots of mathematical things are possible in this hypershader as well. Well, have a good day.